Hello folks and welcome. Endeavor OS KDE Plasma 6.0.5. It's uh, using a 6.9 series kernel. Today's video is uh, not for new users. Uh, I would say it's uh, medium to advanced and I'm going to talk about the KDE menu, how you can add your own subcategories in here, submenus, and how you can take your own applications, script files or commands and convert them into icons and place them in these menus. I have uh, two of these, one I call ping me. Uh, it's just a simple uh, convert a, a web address into an IP address. This one literally backs up several folders and I have a couple of ones created in the system area. One is for memory usage and swap. It will display how much RAM, how much RAM is in use, how much is shared and swap information, swap file. And uh, you get the idea there. Then I have another one, it's instantaneous reboot and power off. All of these things can be ran directly in KRunner. I will type in one example by typing in PO. Power off is now highlighted. All I gotta do is hit enter and it'll power my system down. If this is something you're interested in, then continue watching. I'm filming in 1920 by 1080. Again, this is not geared toward new users. However, everyone is welcome to watch. If you are a brand new user to Linux, I would just be careful. Certainly encourage anyone to learn. More importantly, folks, welcome. Filming in 1920 by 1080. If you'd like to subscribe, the icon should be floating above your time and date area. It's, uh, 360 plus videos, I think. They're all keyword searchable. And I do encourage new subscribers to read my mission statement. There's also some links in there for you. All right, I'm gonna demo a couple of these. So uh, the first one is gonna be using a USB stick that's uh, already formatted with extension four called USB back one. I created something in this menu. That something in this menu is created in my stuff called USB back one. It is an icon that I can distribute on the desktop, pin it to the task manager, and I can also use KRunner. I'm just gonna type in USB you can see that it found it immediately. And all I gotta do is hit enter. And it'll actually start making backups. So this video is really not about script files. I have videos on script files. I'm gonna be talking about this menu today. But I will show you some examples of it. I will click this one while it's busy uh, copying three folders, then I'll talk about this one. So right now it's in process. It's almost done actually. And this one here can also be run uh, as a command out of terminal. I'll make it bigger for you. So it will show me the total amount of RAM in GI format, total used, free, shared, buffered, available, and also your swap if it is in use. This box will auto close in 20 seconds. I'm not using a swap file. I chose not to. When I set up my system with Endeavor OS Plasma, I chose extension four, just my choice, and I chose system D, which is default. And more importantly, I chose not to have a swap file because I don't use Hibernate. Hibernate is required when you're, if you're using, sorry, if you're using Hibernate, a swap file or swap is required. Let's put it that way. That option is there on your installer as an FYI. Now this is finished. It was three folders. I could have wrote my script to do more. I also wrote the script. If you notice, there was no file list while I was displaying that. I was busy showing you this other command here. But when I ran this, there was no terminal box that opened. That script file actually contains a command that displays file names. I turned it off using this menu editor that is located in here. I turned this off so it will run silent in the background and make copies. I didn't have to open this for you. The only reason I opened it was to let you see that it was doing something. Otherwise, it would have just done it all by itself and then I can click that open later to find out my folders are here. The script file that I wrote for this also does deletions. In other words, it will sync these file for file, folder for folder. You can write your own script files. Again, I have examples of that on my YouTube site. So ping me is also a script file that just uh, looks like this. It's a cutesy little thing that basically takes fuzzy friendly 
IP addresses, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say IP addresses, the web addresses and converse them into an IP address. That's what I meant to say. So I want to do Amazon.com. As long as you spell it right, should be able to take DNS and find it. There's the IP address, and it uses a one ping and one ping only. That's all I needed to convert that into an IP. So I'll give you another one. I'll just type in ba.com. And there's uh, the current address as DNS founds it, domain name system. And then I'm going to put a bogus address. I'll do uh, ba.org. I don't think that exists. Yep, no address associated with hostname. So whatever you have for your applications or script files, you can make these things rather easily. So I got, I created a submenu. I created two items in here. Again, lots of these little things may use script files and you can use different options. I also, uh, you can also create these in existing submenus like I did here. So in here, there was a lot of stuff that was installed by the system, but I installed these. All right, so these are instantaneous power off and reboot icons that are currently available in my system. You've already seen this, so I'm gonna close that. So if I type in PO, there's my power off. All I do is hit enter. I'm gonna hit escape and then type in RE for reboot. Reboot now and hit enter and then it'll start rebooting the system. Obviously, I don't wanna do that while I'm filming, but you can see maybe some convenience to this. I don't need any icons on my desktop. I don't need to click anything in, in here either. These are just here for convenience purposes. You can also pin them to your task manager. Would I do that? No. These are too easily clickable. It is your machine though, but you'll probably find that you inadvertently click these once in a while. So I don't really care for them here. Now I have this memory usage thing here. That's not a problem. And I can also use terminal to get the same info. Let me make this larger for you. Frank is just a made up name. So my computer name is uh, Gemini2. I want to type in MAN free to give you a definition and explain some of the, uh, the way it reports memory. So uh, starting at the top, I apologize. Display the amount of free memory on your system, free and used. And then also it uh, does look at swap. Now down here, when you do the human readable, you can convert that. And now that now you can see what a Gibby byte is and a Mebby byte is. So, all right, you can also highlight these, copy them, open up a browser and get a definition of that. I'm gonna hit Q and type in free. So this would be in raw bytes. So that's uh, 32 gigabytes. And then I can do upper arrow space dash H, human readable, still too small. Is that better? or worse, maybe worse actually. Let's resize this out. Maybe that's better. All right, 32 gigs, GI, sorry, GI, 2.5, 35 MI. And you can see anyways, total used, free, shared, buff available, and the swap. I chose not to use a swap file during the installation process. If you need Hibernate, you're gonna need swap. I have 32 gigs of RAM, that's why I chose not swap. I'm also using an extension 4 instead of BTRFS and more importantly it's system D default. Okay moving along. So again you can create these icons in here. I'm not really going to get into script files. I have other videos for that. You can look them up on different systems even. They pretty much work the same. But you create your own fancy scripts and you make your own fancy icons. If you decide to use your own icons, um, you can certainly put that in your home directory. And uh, if you decide to do that, may I also remind you that once you start using one icon in your system anywhere out of a personal folder, do not rename the folder, do not move the folder, do not rename the icon. Otherwise, you'll get a blank during a reboot because your system needs to find a locator for that icon if you reassign it. All right, so creating these in these submenus is something you can do there rather easily. So again, right click menu editor. So I am going to, I created the ping me. 
I'll create a new item in my stuff. If I create it outside, then it'll be all by itself. So I want it in a sub menu and you can pick an existing one if you like. I'm going to hit new item. Test, test, test. Why am I putting so many tests on here? So I can find this easy. I'll do power off. Okay, just to give you that command. Find an icon. Again, you can use your own. But the rule is, if you decide to use your own, do not rename that folder, do not move it, and don't rename the icon either. Otherwise, you get a blank during the reboot. Okay, I'm going to do, what are we doing here? Is this power off? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to use shut because there's a shutdown icon in here. It's right here, system shutdown. So I'm going to use that. That's good enough. All right, so the command line argument uh, is this. You can, uh, since I'm using systemd, we can do um, system CTL. So I'll try that again. Spelling counts. System CTL space power off. Always check your spelling also. Power off. All right, that's one command. You can also just use power off by itself. Now, my colleagues have told me that it, that's a little rough when you're shutting down your system. So they like to um, maybe recommend system CTL for a little gentler way of shutting it down. Either way, I haven't really seen the difference. But more importantly, if you want system CTL space power off. When you hit save, you may not see this right away, but it'll take the system CTL and move it into programs and leave power off on the command line. I'm not going to close and reopen the box. I'm just going to click a different category. I don't care what, what it is. And then I'll click in here. Now you can see what I'm talking about. So my icon that was created here, as I pointed out earlier, I created three. This one has the same attributes. And so does the reboot. So you would type in system CTL space reboot for the reboot part and go find the reboot icon or make your own. All right, there is always the, um, okay, now let's close all that. So we can go and find it in our menu. Test, 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 power off. We can add it to the desktop, pin it to the task manager, and we can also send it to favorites. All right, that's not a big deal. Okay, and we can also remove that. All right, the thing that, that when you create little things like this, a lot of times people say, I don't want that anymore or I want to delete that for whatever reason. So there's no uninstall in here. So there are two ways to uninstall this thing and sometimes it leaves remnants of the um, reference to your creation. If you use the search feature or KRunner, I'm going to show you a perfect example of this. I'm going to go to my stuff and actually physically delete that. So it's called test, test, power off. I'm going to do right click and delete and hit save. Let's go check the menu first and uh, you can see that it's gone. If the icon is not gone sometimes, um, I'm going to show you one command and then if it's still there, then I would log in and out of your system. It's just another glitch. But here I'm going to type in the word test and you can still see it. It says test, test, power off and it actually still works. KRunner can also find it. All I did was type in test and it found it right there. Test, 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 power off. Where's it coming from? This folder right here. So home time and control H shows hidden. Or you can use the hamburger menu and do it the old fashioned way. Show hidden files. Anyways, find your uh, dot local. All right, dot local is where this is stored under share under applications. These are all the other creations that I have. I showed you the mem usage, I showed you the USB, I showed you the ping, I didn't show you power off and reboot because I can't, because that will literally power off my system. However, test test power off is here. That is why KRunner can find it, because it's coming from here. And this file is called test test power off dot desktop. It was in here earlier, because I called it that. So I'm gonna click on it and hit delete. Now it's gone. Now if I type in, test in KRunner, it's not going to find it. Or if I open up the menu, I can type in test and it will find it. So there's a lot of things you can actually, you can create your own subcategories. You bring in your own scripts. You bring in your own command lines. 
assign icons to them. They assign just like any other icon. And more importantly, you can, you can try to uninstall them here, or you can go to your file manager and open up your period local share applications and delete them from here. This is actually the fastest. All of these files contain the same. Dot desktop on all of them. Thank you for watching.